making this clean modern text animation in DaVinci Resolve is incredibly easy. So we are staying on the Fusion page here. And first thing we're going to do is to bring a text node. And then let's just write our text in the text box. And then let's change the font here. I'm going to use system font for the sake of this demonstration. I'm also going to change the font type as well to semi expanded heavy. So now let's just bring up the size a little bit here. And now we're ready to add some shadow. So to do that, we are going to come to the shading tab up top here. And then underneath it, we're going to choose the third element. So now when we do that, you're going to see that it's going to say black shadow. And then let's click enable. Now you're going to see that we have this nice, beautiful shadow behind our text. All right, the first thing we're going to do here is to come to softness and then the X setting. We're going to right click and then in the menu, select expression. And then we're going to drag and drop this plus sign here on top of the Y setting here. So this will allow you to basically sync up X with Y. So when we start to adjust the Y setting, X is going to be adjusted accordingly as well. All right, so we're going to just bring these two settings up to about 10. I think that's enough softness for this animation. Now let's come to position offset X setting here, bring it up so that it's going to look like the light is coming from the left hand side. Now, one way we can animate this is by coming over to the transform tab and adjusting the spacing setting. And as we squeeze the characters in a bit, you're going to see that the problem is that the shadow is not casting onto the next character like what we saw in the intro. So right now, this just looks terrible. Uh, OK, so let's just reset the setting here and then let's uh, go back to the shading tab and underneath it under the sort by setting, we're going to change it from priority to distance. So what this will allow you to do is to essentially sort different elements of this text based on distance data rather than priority setting. So let's just click on distance and instantly you are going to see some good results here. So let's go back to the transform tab here and play with the spacing setting and look at just how sick this looks, guys. Uh, it looks incredible. It adds so much dimension without us even doing much but it's not perfect at this point. Uh, you're going to see that the first two letters have some problems there. But because this is all based on distance data, so we are going to come to the offset X setting here and then just bring this up a bit. And you're going to see that as we move this over, all the shadows are now in line. Uh, we are no longer seeing that problem. It just this just adds so much dimension to this animation. But one issue at this point is that the text is off screen. So to fix that, we are going to bring a transform node and then we're going to adjust the center X setting to bring the text back to the center of the screen. Now, there is another way to go about creating the same animation, which is to go to the layout tab instead. And then we're going to adjust the center X setting here to push this text over to the right. So this will fix the shadow issues. And then let's go to the text tab and then underneath it, we're going to adjust the tracking setting here. So as you can see, this will allow you to basically create the same look and feel. All right, now let's just once again bring a transform node here, adjust the center X setting to bring the text back to the center of the screen. So once again, the tracking setting here is going to be the key setting that we'll be using to animate this effect. All right, so to animate this, we are going to set a keyframe for the tracking setting here at the zero frame. Bring this down until all the characters are pretty much collapsed into just one. And then we are going to move over about 38 frames, which in my case is just a little over one second. And then we're going to bring the uh, bring up the tracking setting here until all the characters are not fully expanded, but they are expanded at the point where, you know, you can still see the shadow being cast onto the next character. So this is a good stopping point for me. Now let's just bring up the spline editor here. We're going to select character spacing. Let's just zoom in a bit and then select both uh, frames, uh, both keyframes. And then we are going to just to hit the F key, which will flatten the curve. And then we're going to manually adjust the easing and ease out uh, to my liking. So now, as you can see that uh, we have a nice little animation going on, but this animation at this point can still use some work. So I'm going to use the write on setting here. Uh, let's go ahead and set a keyframe and then just bring the write on end all the way down to zero. And then let's move over 38 frames and then just bring the write on end here back up to one. Now let's bring up the spline editor. We're going to deactivate uh, character spacing and write on start. They're not the same as deselecting. So if you want to deselect, let's say uh, another setting here, simply just click on it. Uh, so now this will deselect it. 
Either way, it won't interfere with us adjusting the main setting here, which is right on end. So let's select both uh, keyframes here. Let's just once again, flatten the curve, uh, making adjustment here to the easing ease out. And then uh, you're gonna see that uh, at this point, this looks way much better. However, there is another way where you can go about creating the same effect without using right on. And this is my preferred method, which is to come over to the text box, right click and in the menu, select follower. So now this is going to open up the modifiers tab up top. So let's go there and then we're going to change the delay setting to one frame. And then we're going to go over to the shading tab and, and underneath it, you're going to find the opacity setting here. We're going to just to set a keyframe and then bring it all the way down to zero. And then we're going to just move over one frame and then just bring it back up to one. And then let's do the same thing for the shadow element, which is uh, again, element three. So let's go there. And then we're going to, once again, at the zero frame, set a keyframe for opacity setting, make sure it's at one and then move over one frame, bring opacity back up to one. So now if we have a look guys, you're gonna see that uh, this effect is complete and it looks absolutely amazing. And to put a bow on this entire animation, we're just going to bring a background note, connect transform to it as a foreground, and then make sure this whole thing is connected to media out one. So now let's just take this back to the edit page, let this effect render. And as you guys can see that uh, this is uh, the intro that you saw earlier. And uh, this is very easy to create in DaVinci Resolve. It's something you can do today for your own video. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, I will see you next time.